Welcome my lions to this week's edition of our Amazon FBA video. Now today we're going to talk about one simple thing. What is your New Year's resolution and does Amazon FBA fall into that category? So that's it guys. I want you guys to start the new year with a bang and I want to provide you guys with some information if Amazon FBA is right for you because you never want to get into something that you have doubts about that you're not hundred percent sure about. Of course, there is fear with every business that we start, but if you have serious doubts about it, do not get started. And I'm warning you guys, because there is a lot of fake information. There's a lot of fake gurus on YouTube that try to sell their courses to you guys. And guys, I'm not selling you anything. I just want to give you guys information to help you guys out. So that's what I want. I want you guys to have an open mind, but at the same time, I'm a smart mind when you're trying to get into Amazon FBA. Now, if your new year's resolution involves trying to start an Amazon FBA business, right? Then by all means do so. I always encourage people provide you guys the right information and I don't have to be the one you're looking up to for information. It could be anyone, but make sure you do your research. Make sure you, educate yourself. So anything that we start, like we go to school for a reason, right? We go to universities, colleges, uh, high school, whatever we do, right? So that we can get the information, learn something valuable to apply it in real world. And that's what it all is, guys. Like it's all about getting the information, knowing the business and launching it the right way. One of the most important things that always come up is how much time should I spend researching products, how much time should I spend on actually launching my product, how long does it take for my product to come to an Amazon FBA warehouse, and in general, how long does it take for an Amazon FBA to get started from ground up to like whatever you wanted to take it, right, to launch. So product research, there are so many tools these days like Helium 10 that I always promote and the reason is because it's the Chrome extension is absolutely free. You guys don't have to go out and pay for Jungle Scout or Viral Launch or anything like that. Jungle, the Chrome extension for Helium 10 is absolutely free. Check it out. I'll post a link in the description as well so you guys have access to that. And download it. Start playing around with it. Like I want you guys to the first week to be like play around with different products. See what you like. See what is actually in demand in your area. So always search within your specific area that you want to sell because um, when, when I mean area, I mean geographic area because you want to know what products are in demand. Like something that is in demand in Canada, Toronto, it's not going to be in demand in India or California, for example, right? Or it might be, but what I'm saying is that find that out for sure. Helium 10 Chrome extension allows you to do that. It allows you to check different markets, uh, check out like what kind of sellers are in that market, see if there is room for you to penetrate the market and get your product in and uh, essentially become successful at it. So one thing you have to keep in mind, which is very tricky, is that you constantly have to search and look at it, um, at the product uh, research aspect of it, even if you have choose, chosen a product and you're already um, in the process of ordering it and you want to launch your product. Reason being that Amazon FBA is a very tricky business in the sense that our products do not stay profitable for a long time. I've seen products stay for a year, maybe a little bit over that, but more than that, it's very unlikely. So Amazon FBA is all about finding profitable products at any given point and selling it until it's profitable. Because like you guys, right? Think about it. You're trying to get into Amazon FBA. Thousands of other people are also trying to become Amazon sellers because they see the value in it. They see that, okay, I can make some extra money as a side hustle at first and then potentially make this my full-time job, right? So there is going to be competition from your own peers. There's going to be like new sellers getting into the market. So it's all about timing. If you get into the market at the right time, you're selling your product, it will generate you good profit for six months, let's say. And then after that, you will see a decline. Like anything in business, the product has an optimized level that it reaches. And then afterwards, it's a decline. And which brings me to my second point. Product research is huge, but you also have to have to invent your product. I don't mean you guys go ahead and play around with electronics and trying to figure out, oh, what can I uh, create? I'm not an electrician, I'm not an engineer, right? What I mean is that engineer a product by combining two separate products and creating a need. Apple is a perfect example, guys. 
And it's a lesson that a lot of us forget. Steve Jobs created a need that we didn't even know we had, right? He created the Apple phone, right? The iPhone. And we did not know that we needed a touchscreen phone that is going to allow us to do all the things that we do on it, right? But he created that need for us. He saw ahead of time. He almost saw like a premonition of what is to come. And he took advantage of that and he launched his products before anybody else could. Blackberry on the other side is the opposite side, right? Blackberry said, no, I'm going to stick to the values that we've built. I'm going to stick to the processes that we've built, the keypads, and everybody loves it. Why change something that is not broken? Except they didn't understand that if it's not broken right now, it doesn't mean it's gonna, not going to be broken a year from now or two years from now. And that's exactly what happened. When Steve Jobs launched iPhone, it took over the world by storm guys like everybody's like oh why am i going for a keypad when i actually use a touch screen it's so much easier i can turn it make the keypad bigger and all those great things right there was customizability the graphic user interface was so friendly that it just blew everybody out of the water so now blackberry what they did they still stuck to their note we're gonna stick to our values essentially what happened the demise of them right like now blackberry all they do is software, they barely do any hardware. They're not too far from where I live actually. They're literally half an hour from where I live. And I mean, it's so sad to see a Canadian company that was a pioneer. They actually created emails in, uh, in phones. They're the first ones to launch emails on a cell phone. And they actually lost their market share big time, right? So that's what I mean, guys. You gotta be ahead of the curve. You gotta think ahead. You gotta think about what else you could do with your product. So combining two products, like creating a need. So if you're selling, let's say, a camera, for example, right? That's it by itself a product. But what if you sold an SD card with it? Or what if you sold a fancy bag? Or if somebody is buying this for my for video recording, what if you sold a microphone with it? Stuff that makes it unique. That's what I mean by inventing your own product. Even though there are two different products, not only you're upselling, first of all, which is a great, great way to make money, you are also selling a product that no other seller is offering. People don't have to go to two different sellers because you are selling these two exact products with some kind of discount that they can take advantage of. So they will come to you first. The second way is actually rethinking about the product. So one of the greatest example was provided by Adam R. Fisher, which is another guru that I respect. He's great at Amazon FBA. Check him out, Adam R. Fisher, guys. Um, so he said, uh, he basically uh, told the story of a cup, like a regular red cup, and how to use it in a different kind of market segment and how to use it in a different kind of, um, like a, making it a niche product for another group of uh, buyers like another higher level of group of buyers so the red cup as you guys know is heavily used when people are drinking um students it's always associated with students and parties and all that kind of stuff so he said how can i make this more fancy so actually upper echelon people can actually use this too so um you got the cup they turned it clear and they put a golden ring around it that's all they did guys and it looks fancy you can use it at like um somebody who's like in his 30s 40s who does like a party for his co-workers and stuff like that so you can actually use it in a different setting that's what i mean by invention guys he actually reinvented the product and he didn't have to do too much he just had to think outside of the box and how what that group that i'm trying to sell to wants out of the cups that they're gonna buy and that was it guys, they made millions and millions for the seller. Now I can't remember the exact seller who did this, but Adam R. Fisher told me the story and it was amazing. So that's it guys, that's what I wanted to tell you guys that if you're doing this, do it the right way. The last thing is your product launch. When you're launching your product, you gotta think about your reviews, initial reviews guys, it's very important because that gives you social proof. When you're launching your product, you cannot just go to the market with zero reviews and expect sales. You got to create some kind of social proof and I will post videos on each one of these points that I'm talking about and I've done extensive videos on these. So I'm going to post all those links for you guys so you guys can check it out. 
Then you gotta do your proper uh, PPC campaigns. You gotta do your giveaways. Now, they, they don't do it simultaneously, but um, there are ways of doing this one after another. And that's how you do a proper launch. And of course, your listing, guys, it has to be top notch from your pictures to your content copy um, to uh, the prod, the way you're talking about the product, the bullet points in the description your keywords optimizing your listing guys and there are ways that i've shown you how to optimize it and i'm gonna post these videos as well for you guys so all this is gonna take about a two to three months worth of your time in order to do this properly now you guys might be saying tam is my product is gonna be still um relevant or is there still gonna be room in the market for me to get into that's when you keep checking every step of the way before you order your product as you're building your listing and everything you keep checking to make sure it's relevant and you can still launch it because don't order the product if you can't uh, if the market is closed and there's so many sellers and you don't have any opportunity to make profits on it okay that's it guys i wish you guys a wonderful wonderful new years Enjoy the rest of the holidays and let's start the new year with a bang, okay? Have a good one and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.